you know, a woman who will encourage us. And we were talking before the program began, and she was sharing some of the stuff we will be talking about this afternoon. And so she matters. Welcome with me. Pastor Mary Eniolu. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Oh, Thank you're you. welcome to this program. It's fantastic to have you it's here. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> <laughs> There's been so many things happening. On my way in, I was um, listening to one of the radio stations, and they were talking about, um, you know, parents and the fact that, you know, what were parents' views with regards to the emphasis on reality TV shows now yes and I thought that was quite interesting because the presenter was wanting to genuinely understand how people like us with teenage children do feel about the fact that now most of the programs are you know really based on showcasing the fact that yes you can make quick money you can just get straight into mm. the media and hey presto you become mm. a millionaire yes you know and I yes. thought that was quite interesting yes mm. well the thing is a lot of people love reality programs don't they yeah. because it's about real life mm. so that's why they're so popular so yeah. popular now but I understand what you mean because um, it can it can give a false impression yeah and a lot of our teenagers need a reality check yeah. to understand that hard work is still the way ahead yeah um it's not a question of watching what goes on on telly yeah. and aspiring to be like that person because it can derail derail you because a lot of people feel well i don't need an education that anymore was, uh, that was exactly what he was talking really? about yeah because he was saying he said when they're about eight or nine years old it's still okay but by the time they begin to get to 13 14 mm. then they begin to think i don't need to study yeah. Yeah, you know, I can I, I can just go sing or go do yeah, something yeah, and yeah. I'll be a star overnight. Yes. I don't need my maths or English. Yes, so yeah, 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 I think it's putting in the balance. Yeah. So more more than ever before parents need to be there to guide their children and show them that listen, I've been around for a while, don't know everything, but I know mm, some things and mm. you do need you still need that grounding. <laughs> yeah, well what I do with my kids I say, How old are you? How old am I? We find the average <laughs> And I'll say I am four times older than you. So I, am, I know a few you know, things. So yes. I know a few things. But it can be hard. You know, and, and I, sometimes I jokingly say to the young people, you know, at church, I say to them, you think about it. Okay, you run for the reality stuff. You mm. get in, you get, you get what you want. But you can't read your contract, <laughs> you know. And I was at an event a few weeks ago, which was fantastic. It was a, it was, um, a graduation for kids who had just you know, past their 11 pluses and done scholarships okay. and I'm moving to secondary school this September. And one of the people who came to speak was talking about, um, you know, um, challenging our kids and really moving them forward. And, you know, it said something which I thought was quite interesting. It said, for instance, you look at a, a TV personality you know, and you want to be like that person. Mm. Have you thought about being that person's lawyer? And you think of how much money you'll be getting as the person's yes, accountant absolutely. or sports engineer yeah. or medical engineer. Yes. Or, you know, but you don't. So it was almost like, look, you don't have to be that person. There are alternatives. All the things yeah, that you can do. And you yes. make as much yes. money yes. because you're, you're, you're with the celebrities. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was quite interesting. And yeah. so, Pastor Mary. Oh, I was looking at, you know, what we're going to be talking about today because we're really going to be exploring, you know, what you do, how you do. And more importantly, a lot of the viewers who watch She Matters are women. We do get men as well who okay. either are looking to start something, are working on something, on a project. And, you know, are really encouraged when they hear a woman like yourself, you know, sharing her different experiences and things that they've learned over the years. And I was looking at what you do. You're a mother of... Three kids? Yes, three boys. Three boys? Three boys. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> three wonderful boys, yes. Three wonderful boys. <laughs> so you have numbered in your own home. I don't mind, you know. I'm the princess in the house. <laughs> well, I no like competition. That. <laughs> No competition. Wow. Yeah. yeah, the only example of a mother, yeah. of a woman. Yeah. You, that's a lot of pressure. Well, some, but, but it's all good. It's, yeah. it's good. They're my bodyguards, like I like to call them. Good. <laughs> three wise men. Yes, that's know? what we call them, actually, the three wise men. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Mm. And you pastor with your husband? Yes, I do. Yeah. And you run your own... Um, Solicitors, my own law practice. Yeah, you've got yes. your own law practice. Mm -hmm. 
and you also founded Just Out of This World. Yes. So you're a woman who wears many hats. Very many hats. Now, many so hats. how do you... Okay, t tell us a bit about yourself. I mean, because as a mom, it means you, you went to law school and... You did, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, I, I first graduated from uh, law school in 1984, okay. which was a, a while ago. Um, yeah, I'm not giving anything ago. away about my age, but... <laughs> A while ago, and um, came into this country. I had to retrain. Okay. Yes, because the the legal system in Nigeria is quite similar to the legal system here. So you get a lot of exemptions from, but, okay. but you still, if I, there were two routes I could have taken, but I chose to take the longer, more expensive okay. route, simply because I felt that would give me more grounding. Uh, to get ahead here. So sometimes it's not always the easiest, it's mm. not always the best, mm. which was what I choose, chose to do. And I got uh, exempted from a number of the subjects. But I went to law school. Funny enough, I'll tell you a funny story. My first son, uh, I went to school on a Monday, I'll never forget. With my husband and I went to the school, I got registered. Um, London Guildhall University in London. And I came back home and had my baby. Oh, wow. On the same day, yes. <laughs> so that was funny. And um, they, couldn't, they wouldn't defer my place. So I had to start uni a week after I had my first son. Oh, wow. So it was tough, but if it's something you... With you're, a one-week-old baby. Yes, yes. But So my husband was very, very supportive mm. at the time, obviously. He had to be with the baby and all that. So I started my course and I finished, did the LPC, graduated um, with a distinction. So I wow. did, yes. Yeah, I got the Law Society Prize in that year, which was fantastic because then I had my second son in the second year. So it was a lot. Now, don't tell me you're a superwoman <laughs> because you had, you, you went through, you, you, went, you, you registered um, for school, you had the baby the same day, you went back a week later mm. and you came out with a distinction. Yes? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of hard work. But I, I'm never afraid of hard work. I don't mind hard okay. work. Mm. So I finished and, um, and then I got my training contract. So I practiced as a, as a solicitor in London. And um, after I had my third son, I decided I was fed up of the commuting and I wanted to remain in Maidstone because we had moved out of London at the time. And so I started working in-house with uh, Maidstone Housing Trust. Okay. And... I, I had always thought of having my own practice. I always knew it was something I wanted to do, but it was just a question of when to do it. And my husband has always been on my case. You have to, you have mm. to do it, you have to do it. And I got fed up of working as a solicitor in-house. I wanted to get back into private practice because I, I was finding it a bit boring. I wanted something more challenging. So I started to look for work. And I went and applied for this position. They were looking for somebody to head their conveyancing department, which was my main specialty at the time. And I went, I saw the lady. She was impressed with me, called me back for a second interview. I went in. This time it was two male partners. And uh, for some reason, they decided, well, we, we don't think you're suitable for the job. And I left, walked away from that interview thinking, here I am trying to convince these guys that mm. I can do this. I told them I did it in my previous practice, told them how I built the practice and all that. And they weren't convinced. And I'm thinking, why am I trying to sell myself to them to help them build their practice when this is something I want to do anyway? Mm. And that was it. I thought, now is the time to start. So I started my practice in 2005. And uh, I was blessed because um, the, the company I was working for in-house decided mm. to retain me as mm. their external solicitor. Wow. So right from day one, I had a corporate client, which was a big deal because... Mm. I didn't have to start from scratch wondering where the client's going to mm. come from. So that was a big blessing. And five years on, we're growing and growing, and I'm just thankful, really. Wow. So, so, yeah, that's that's, that's that amazing. Would be. <laughs> and now, in the, in the middle of that, I know you have a passion for music, because I know years ago, um, I, I would hear you sing at one of the leading churches in, in London here. Mm. So, and... I know you you also founded um, Just Out of This World, which is a music, you know, um, show yes. that airs on, on TV yes. and it's an outreach to Christians. So yes. now combining your role as a mother and, you know, you're running a very successful practice, where's music from? So, <laughs> you know, where, 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 why music? I've always had a love for music. Even before I gave my life to Christ, I had loads of CDs, loads of... And I, when I listen to music, I don't just listen to it. I'm very quick to learn the lyrics. So I knew lots of loads and loads of songs. And 
having you know when I gave my life to Christ as well, that converted to Christian music. I just it's just a love I have for music because I believe that music is a very powerful tool. We all know that music ministers to people in a way that sometimes it, the spoken word mm. doesn't. And for me, Christian music is the most powerful powerful type of music that is out there because not only can it entertain and bless your soul it can actually minister to your spirit I mean I'm sure it's happened to you several times when you can't even pray mm. and all you need is just to put it on a CD and you're uplifted so um, so yes I've always had that love for music but, so but there's, some, there's something I've noticed I've noticed that some of these songs that I've written there's some, some songs especially the songs that I've written or sang here um, in, in the United Kingdom, I noticed that they usually have a meaning. For, it's almost like they're telling a story. So mm -hmm. you look at Here I Am to Worship. There's this song by Lou Fellingham, There Is a Day. And I, it's one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, anytime I listen to the lyrics, it makes so much so it's almost like, I'm agreeing with you, it's almost like reading the scriptures, you know, and she's talking about the fact that one day we're going to go on and be with our maker and everything will be okay, yes. you know, and, you know, we will see him like he is. Mm. And it's almost like a song of encouragement, a song of, hey, and then you listen to some songs and it's almost like two or three lines. There's nothing wrong with two or three lines, but there is almost, they're just, they're choruses. It's not, there's no depth. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, those bless other people as well. They you bless know. me too, yeah. but I have just, it's just that I've noticed a difference that certain people write songs in a certain way and some people... Yeah, I mean, there are all sorts of reasons for that. Some is commercial. Some, okay. you know, some people like songs that, they, they, you know, very catchy, people can easily connect to and can easily sing and remember and perhaps the songs sell more. Some people are not too bothered about whether it's commercial. They just want to get out the message that they believe God has placed in their in their heart, you know. But um, I just believe that any kind of music, as long as it's scripturally, scripturally based, mm. can bring healing, can mm. bring deliverance, I, oh, can, yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, so so that that's always been a, a desire. Apart from that, I just love music anyway. So, so all the time, even as a solicitor, working as a solicitor and, and all that, music has always been a big part of my life, you know, um, in churches. I've, I've worked more with choirs, even mm. in Nigeria before coming here, working with choirs. I love choirs. I love the big sound, mm. you know. I, I love solo artists as well, but there's nothing like a choir of people singing with all their different harmonies. Mm. I think that's what, you know, that's what heaven. it's going to be like in heaven. <laughs> so... <laughs> so I definitely, definitely love that. So I've always been in, involved in music, singing, directing. And um, uh, so naturally, I, I tend to love shows, uh, you know, certain shows on TV mm -hmm. that, that are musical as well. And, you know, the competitions and all that. And just watching people, again, reality TV, mm -hmm. watching them come and, and audition mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the full view of the public audience and watching how they go from one stage to the other. Mm -hmm. Very interesting and intriguing mm -hmm. for me. Um, but a few years ago, I started to notice that a lot of, uh, there started to be an increase in believers who come on these shows. Okay. And um, I have nothing against it because people feel, you know, you need opportunity, mm. you need an open door, this is opportunity, I'll, I'll step into it. But my view, um, and it might not be a popular view, but my view is if you're, um, if you're a Christian, your, your faith and your belief has to filter through your art. Mm. Um, as, a, as a solicitor, I don't preach to my clients. I get tempted to mm. sometimes, depending on the nature. I mean, if it's a family matter, for example, you get tempted to, you know, say, come on, you guys, try and reconcile and things mm. like that. But I can't really do it that bluntly. But if I'm an artist, um, I believe that my art should reflect my faith. Mm. If I'm a singer, I believe my songs should be... Because um, any form of art, I think, is an... It comes out of you. It flows mm. out of you. Yeah. So you can't divorce your Christian faith from things like that. That's mm. what I believe. I, I think, agree with you. I think if you're, yeah. if you're an accountant, yeah. you wouldn't be speaking in tongues when you're calculating <laughs> the figures. <laughs> no, you... <laughs> or even if, as a doctor... You know, you can but, pray, but, but, yeah, you can, yeah, but yeah. it's kind of different, those yeah. professions. But if it's art, 
creative or performing mm. arts, it's something that it's comes out of who you are. Mm. So I really believe that as a Christian, it's very difficult to divorce your singing from your faith. It has mm. to reflect. It doesn't have to be punctuated with Jesus all through the song, mm. but it has to have that Christian um, yeah, but, but, foundation. Yeah, but, but I do find out though that sometimes even Christians, um, when they, I don't know if it has to do with their con with the contracts they've signed when they get into when they, they're known or when they budding artists. Mm. But even some Christians, you know, you can't even tell that they're Christians because they've gone all secular. You know, so and I mean, I was having this discussion with some young people, and we were, we were they actually were literally tearing apart some of the most popular lyrics and songs. And honestly, when we be began to look into it, it was like, oh my goodness, mm. you know, is this, you know, and they were the ones literally telling me the power. Some of them say, just like what you're saying, they wake up sometimes and they can literally hear those songs in their hearts, even mm. though the lyrics are not you know, beneficial. Mm. And so it's, I'm agreeing with you that it comes from within, you know, and so I suppose, but then... <sighs> I know it's a big debate. I think it's a big debate because I've spoken to so many people and different people have different views. That's why I say this is my view. Yeah. My view is, like I say, it doesn't have to have Jesus all through the song, mm. but the song has to reflect be, yeah it has to be an extension of least. who you are yeah, yeah. it has to be an extension of you who yeah, you are yeah. uh, so th that's my view and like you say sometimes it's it's the restriction in the contract mm. that's why i feel that christians going to some of these um secular competitions while he will give you the exposure and i know that there's some christian artists who have used it to their advantage mm. because they didn't win it gave yeah. them that opportunity yeah. people got to know them and now there are a number of them who are out there s singing pure mm. christian music but they got that break through this competition so if mm. you don't win i think you might be able to be able, turn yeah. it around but if, yeah, I, I agree. but if you do win yeah. because you have to uh, play along the tune of your recording company or whatever there are those restrictions as to what you can and what you can't um do so how will the christians of i remember having an interview with an actress here on She Matters a few months ago, and she was showcasing or she was detailing some of the the, the challenges of being a Christian in such an in this kind of environment. So, mm. and I suppose it's the same musically as well. You know, and I fear for a lot of our kids who listen to secular music. And as a parent, how do you draw the? How do you? I mean, you know, short of you becoming like when I was growing up, you become an SU. And there's you know. nothing wrong with SU. I know, I know there's nothing wrong with it. I prefer with to walk the, the straight and narrow road. I, I don't want to, you know, get I to know, the but, edge. But what I found is, I mean, because I have a ten-year-old, blessedly, my son's not really into music. He's about sixteen. Mm. He listens, but he's but my daughter, if she listens to a song for the first She'll time. Pick it up, she yeah. picks it so mm. she has such a brain you know and even if i don't play it at home when she's at school sometimes they say how did, where did you learn yeah. where did you hear that yeah. you know so it's almost like how do you balance that out mm. you know in this world of yes you want them to listen to i mean i had a thing with some 11 to 15 and i said a lot of the christian music they can't even find them you know that I, is a that is a, a challenge yeah. i mean i have i have three boys i have a teenager and uh, the other is 12 uh they all love music they, my husband is very musical as well we, yeah. we you know so it, i'm not surprised that in our family we love music yeah. and yes it's a challenge it's a ch it's a challenge to get them to listen to because i always say what does that music do to you what yeah. does what effect does it have on you yeah. listen to the we did that you know in church once we told us all the teenagers tell us your favorite songs and then we went and got the lyrics of those songs and we told them to stand up and read the lyrics and some of them couldn't mm. because they just couldn't get themselves to say the words but when you're listening to it you don't really listen to the lyrics do you? you're bobbing your head away to the tune mm. so it's just a question of educating them really um, but I've said to introduce them to a lot of gospel music that they weren't even aware because in Christian music, in, there's a lot, there's such a wide, mm. you know, spectrum yeah. that a lot of the young people are not aware of. Maybe mm. because it doesn't, it's not as popular yeah. as secular music. Mm. It, they don't hear it that often mm. when they tune, you know, tune on the radio, unless they go to a, a Christian channel, mm. they wouldn't get to hear it. Mm. So it's more difficult, but they are out there. Mm. A lot of good 
good Christian music. So it's just a question of finding, sourcing them out for your kids. Mm. Because that's very big with me. I, be, I know that there's power in music. There is. And there can only be two sources, mm. God or the devil. Mm. So you know? there's no in between. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to ask any questions, if you, you know, have any comments, please feel free to send us an email. And also you can text us as well. Today I've got Pastor Mary with me and we're talking, it just so happens that it seems we're talking about the power of music. And um, yes, we'll be talking about other things as well. Yeah. Yes, wow, so, yeah, um, I know there is no in between, you know. Um, and I think the, the reality era is really causing parenting to be quite difficult mm. and I think I'm, I'm quite pleased that you know I mean there's some organizations there's a particular one who 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 is becoming if I think they're almost a million now and it's for women and they're really pushing an agenda that look I want my child to grow up normally they're even pushing I think a few weeks ago there was a thing that they need to now begin to add certificates to music as well you right. know because they're a bit yes. concerned that what yes. the kids are listening yeah. to is music videos I mean yes. I was listening on the radio the other day and they were saying pop music videos are now becoming porn mm. yeah, and, and it's true you can't just let your kids watch just anything on TV even <sighs> it's it's a bit scary but <laughs> But God is helping us. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, so you you source a lot of music for your kids. You're able to get them. I do. Yeah, I do. I encourage them. I actively find music for them to listen to because I know the kind of music they enjoy listening to, and I know that that genre of music is also available within the Christian arena. So I actively source the music for them, okay. and and I ask them, were you aware that? we had the sort of music in the Christian world? And the answer is no, because you're not going to hear it playing on BBC or any of the other popular radio stations. Mm. So, and more and more, they're, 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 they're naturally tuning into those stations now to listen to those kind of music. So that's why I don't really, I don't readily knock any type of music, because while it might not be my uh, type of music, yeah. For the kids. Yeah, yeah, yes, they need they need things like that to yeah. listen to. They're not going to listen to Amazing Grace, mm. you know. So, <laughs> so, as long as it's Christian, as long as it's biblical, mm. I'm happy for them to listen yeah. to. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. I, I suppose so. I, I think the the thing is, as parents to, or even as guardians or as pastors, um, leader, youth leaders, youth pastors, to try and make sure that we it, it will put a lot of pressure on us as well. My husband loves music, so mm. he always is uh, looking for alternative it is for the kids mm. but in a case where you and I know that's not it won't happen in every home then you know I wonder how such can be made available to maybe that's another project you're going to be working on uh, <laughs> what I did actually was over the Christmas holiday I specifically asked for a DAB radio from my husband okay. as a Christmas present so that's what we listen to in the car so we don't listen to the main channels anymore we just tune to one of the Christian um, stations on DAB radio. Okay, what happens so, on DAB radio? You, you, you get some of these Christian um, channels that you will not get on mm. the main radio in your car. Mm. Yes. So and that's, they play what we want yes, to hear. Yes, they play what we want to hear. So that's what I do. Wow. Because I find every morning, you know, about 30 minutes in the car driving to school mm. and they want to listen to something. And I thought, we have to, we have to find a way out mm. here. So, so that's what I do. It's interesting. I, I suppose your passion for music has been able to, you know, help you to be able to meet that need, mm. you know. And mm. I suppose that's what looking into. So you were talking about your journey of music. Like you've yes. always like choir. Yes. And yeah, go on. Yes. So, um... Um, what I, I mean, and I, apart from working with choirs, I have this, um, I, should, I, I should say, natural gift to mm. help people. I can, I can listen to you sing, and I can say to you, "Oh, this is where I think you should be going, or this okay. is what I think you should be doing." So I've always had that as well. So are you, would you say you're a mentor as well? Yes, okay. yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. Okay. So, um, so with that passion and that desire to see people come out of themselves and be able to do what they've been gifted to do. Um, in, in around 2007, like I was saying before the program started, and watching these reality shows and seeing Christians going on these shows, and, and I thought, well, we, we need to have something for believers. We need uh, an opportunity. For, there are lots of believers who want to take their music out of the four walls of their local churches mm. and probably don't have that opportunity. So around 2007, that's where it just kind of brew in my spirit I, I, it, it was just there kind of dormant but just mm. there and um 
December 2009, funny enough, I just had this great sense of urgency about mm. it. Like, you have to do it now. Mm. I didn't even have a name. I didn't have any clue how it was going to work out, what I was going to do about it. But it was just like, you, you have to do it now. You mm. have to do it now. And um, so I had a meeting with one of the presenters from Revelation TV mm. and shared the dream, shared the vision with him. And he said to me, you know what, funny enough, we've had about two or three people come uh, and share something similar with us, but it never really took off. They never really did anything about it. And I'm saying to you, fun everywhere we went, because obviously we now say to have a s series of meetings with different people trying to get, make connections to see how it could work. And everywhere we went, it was the same thing we heard. We've had people come to us a month ago, two months ago, last week, with something similar. So I really just felt that was just God saying to me, you need to do it now. You need to do it now. You need to do it now. And so we just took the plunge. <laughs> we just <laughs> took the plunge. And um, the show went out on air the first year, 2009. Uh, funny enough, it was the crew from Revelation TV who shot the first season. Okay. Yes, Miles and, and, uh, Joel. and Joel um, came down and shot it. And it was on Revelation TV for about uh, 12 weeks. Okay. And um, and so we, we were on the roll. We, we we got started. And like I said to you, everything, most things I do, I I really just kind of jump into it. Once yeah. I feel like yeah, you need to do, it, I just jump into it. And so we 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 did that. And last year we we ran it again um, for a shorter period, mm. five 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 uh, weeks. And this year we're we're back for a third season. And it's been it's been uh, it's really been good. It's, it's been a, a fulfillment for me to actually see it happen. So how, 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 how were you able to combine your practice with, with um, just out of this world? Because mm. I know, I, I think the first time I saw it was last year. I watched it last year on TV. Mm. And, um, in, and now, you know, being able to speak to you actually up close and personal, I'm thinking to myself, so how were you able to combine that because I'm, I'm sure you had to go to different locations to film to shoot yes and, and then you had your practice as well yes, yes and also you had to cook and make sure that the kids are okay because i'm trying to really be sure that you're a woman like me uh. <laughs> you had to cook and all that mm. and you also had to pastor the church you know so how were you what principles did you put in place well well, it's not easy. I have to say say that up front. It's not easy combining so many things together. But um, first and foremost, I'll, I'll say I'm blessed because I have a very healthy body um, and, and I have a very supportive family. My, my husband and my kids uh, are very, very supportive of what I do. And um, I think organization helps as well. Okay. Organizing yourself, you know, I never, I, I never fail to have my to-do lists <laughs> with an Are S you very at strict the end. With your to -do list? Yeah, I try to be. I try to finish everything that I set out to do uh, in any particular day. Wow. Yes, I try. I try because we're leaving it till tomorrow. It just makes tomorrow even more. So, what time do you get up on a normal day, and what time do you go to bed on a normal I, day? I get up at six twenty-five. Okay. Some days I go to bed at twelve. Okay. Midnight. Some days uh, at one, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes when we're editing, um, I'm telling you, I, I I had to produce some of the shows. You know, they say necessity is the mother of invention. invention. <laughs> I'd never done it before, but last year I had to produce some of the shows. So when we're editing. Um, and you have a deadline. Yeah. Sometimes you don't go to sleep till three, and then I have to be up at six to go get the kids to school and shoot off to my law practice. So it's it, it's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work, but um, I think we, it's just a question of putting things in place and knowing where everything. It's very funny, you know, the way I can just switch and I know that okay, I mean. Ministry yeah, mode, zone, <laughs> solicitor yeah. zone. It's coming up to the weekend. This is what you need to be doing now, and and um, it, you you have to make a lot of sacrifices. I can't lie. Mm. Uh, there are days that or weeks even I go without watching TV. So you have to if, you know you have to cut out mm. certain things because there are only twenty four hours yeah. in a day. You mm. just have to decide and okay, prioritize and prioritize what's what, important what, yeah, and what's not what, important what you need and, and stuff. What like you that. need to do. But I can honestly say there's no part of my life that's suffering, mm. which is a real blessing. My kids are wonderful, wonderful boys. Mm. Uh, it makes it easy for me because God said he will teach 
our mm. children. Our mm. children shall be taught of the Lord, and I believe He's really teaching them. So mm. I have peace at home. Mm. So that helps. Mm. Because if I had to be grappling with a lot of issues at home, I probably wouldn't be focused. Mm. And you need focus to be able to do all these things. Yeah, so I, I'm, I agree. I'm blessed. I yeah. suppose if, if a woman is at peace at home and you have the support that you need, then yes. that is... So it's ninety it, percent done, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I have the support from my husband, from mm. my kids. My husband has just been amazing, mm. amazing. I'm sure he's watching and, and he's <laughs> yeah, that's me. But he deserves it. He's been so amazing. How, how did he support you with what you're doing? How? Well, just in every way. I'm, I'm surprised. I'm sure he. I, I can imagine Pastor Julius saying, "Mary, are you sure that you want to do this music thing yeah. with the church?" Yeah. With the, yes. Yes, just in every way. If whatever I need, if I'm not there to cook, he will. He doesn't mind doing the cooking. Mm. If I need to be chauffeured off somewhere because I don't like doing long distance driving, yeah. he's there to help me out. Mm. Just anything. He's he has a, um, IT background, okay. so he helps me a lot with the IT bits, mm. the the website, just anything I need. Mm. Really, he's just there to help, and he gives me the moral support because yeah. there are lots of times you feel down. I can imagine. Oh man. <laughs> When you're, especially when you're on the front line oh. of in, in, in a major industry. Yes, yes. Yeah. There are lots of times you feel like, oh, I'm tired now. Mm. I'm tired. I can't do it anymore. Mm. But he's, he's there to give you that talk and say, mm. hey, come on, you know. Mm. You, you know can you can do, do this. Yeah. yeah, you work as a team. Yes, mm. yes. That, that's fantastic. It's beautiful. So mm. how, how are your church members, how do they react to all of this? Oh, they love it. They're excited. <laughs> 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 they they love it. They they um, I, th I think they're inspired mm. by it when they see that I'm out there and I'm doing what I'm doing. They I know they're really challenged and they're inspired by it because mm. it's me saying to them, listen, you can do whatever you want to do. Mm. You can because there are lots of people who have dreams. Mm. There are lots of people who have dreams. And my, like my husband says, sometimes when it's time for something to happen, God just sows the idea as a seed mm. and it's for you to catch it and run with it mm. and I believe there are lots of women out there who God has planted a seed in their hearts and it's a question of just mm. getting up and doing it yeah. so it's very um, inspiring for them mm. uh, a lot of them say things like oh, I didn't feel like coming to night vigil but I know Pastor Mary is going to uh. be there and I know that after everything she's gone through, she can't be there, I can be there. Mm. So, so that that's, gives you strength. Uh, yes, yeah. and it, it tells me that, you know, I'm, I'm being a blessing to somebody. I'm showing them, you know, you can do mm. it. I, I think stepping out is quite... I remember reading um, What Makes the Great Great by a guy called Richard Kimbrough. And you find that, that just like what you're saying... He was saying everybody experiences fear, everybody doesn't want to do it, mm -hmm. everybody doesn't want to stand up, and we have a thousand and one reasons why it can't be done. Yes. But you have to move. Yeah. And for that one person who moves, you, 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 you really just reach thousands. Absolutely. You know, and those who God has on his heart Absolutely. to reach. I yeah. mean, if you listen to the story of anybody who's done anything big, mm. you always hear it comes with the failures, it comes with the disappointments, mm. but it also comes with the success. And it's just a question of you being able to say, you know what, come hill or high water, mm. I am going to keep going. I'm going to keep, keep pushing. I'm going to keep... Uh, keep doing it mm. and the good thing is when you know that God is with you in what you're yeah, doing that yeah. gives you a lot of strength yeah. um, for me anyway personally knowing that God is with me on my journey it gives me a lot of comfort a lot of strength a lot of encouragement a lot of fight mm. I know that I'm not you know on my own I know that this is whatever is happening right now is just a challenge mm. I know that there's something beyond that it really just keeps me mm. it really just keeps me going I, I think it's that attitude because honestly Nobody likes defeat. No. Nobody likes it when you call a pastor, and I know what we pastors are like, <laughs> you know, when you call a pastor, because I also, <laughs> I, I pastor and I also work with an organization, mm. you know, called Tear Fund, you know, I do, I do stuff okay, with them, yes. you know, and so I know, mm. you know, nobody likes it when a pastor says sorry or, you know, or you get a disappointment, oh, yes. oh, and, yes. and, but it's part of it, and I feel that is one thing. You know, that really stops, especially us women who, you know, they've said um, uh, scientifically that women suffer from low self-esteem. And so you're really stepping out. And mm. then somebody says no, you know, and it's almost oh, okay, my cue to stay back and not do anything. You don't want to hear the amount of no's I've heard. Wow. But for every no, there'll be a yes somewhere. You know, because the thing people have to remember is if you give up, you lose out. Mm. If you give up, you lose out. God never gives up. 
So you just have to keep going and know that he will make a way. Mm. He will make a way. The fact that a door shuts doesn't mean that door was ever meant to be open. Mm. But the thing with human beings, we tend to see with our natural eyes, don't yeah. we? You see an opportunity and you think, hey, that's, that's safe. I can it. just make it. If I can just get through that door, you'll all be fine. Mm. But maybe that's not the door God wants you to walk through. So when it shuts, obviously you're like, okay, God, what's happening here? Mm. That was my... Maybe the person is not even seeing what you're seeing. That was my and big breakthrough. That was my big breakthrough. God, what happened? And mm. we get discouraged, but God has something else. Mm. I'm telling you, I just since I said just out of this world, it's made me grow so much. It's given me more patience, mm. definitely. Uh, and you just see God's hand, you know, at the times when you think, I don't want to give too much away, but you know, you're, you're really pushing and really striving for something because I'm a go-getter. That's the kind of person I am. And you're really going for it. Mm. And then it's like a, a brick wall. But that ha- and that happens to all of us. What do you do when you feel like you've done everything you can do and you're like, oh, what? There's nothing There's else, nothing to, else do. to do. Mm. And you give up and you're like, okay, I, don't, I really don't know what I'm going to do mm. here. And then the next thing that happens is you get a phone call yeah. and somebody's offering you something you've been chasing mm. and even a better deal. And you're thinking, wow, mm. this is God. Yeah. So... Um, we, we will always have challenges. Yeah, I remember an accountant saying to me that, you know, his philosophy, which I'd never forgotten, is that when you exercise your faith, when you push, when you do your homework, if you need to get the necessary skills, you get the necessary skills, you plan, you do everything. He says, if you stay in that position, the door will open before you and it will shut behind you. Mm. And so the next person coming behind is not just going to no, sleep they in. Have to do they their have own. to face their mm. own. Mm. And I think we need to hear that because the fact that we're Christians, you know, we, we, um, I, I was reading Colossians this morning that says every handwriting, Jesus took it away. He nailed it to the cross. You know, we're free. You know, um, we're, you know we, we're children of God and stuff like that. I, I suppose that's where our confidence really comes from and not from the nose, as difficult yes. as that is yes. to be yes. able to say. Yes, and the thing is we just have to take cues from the Bible as well because there are lots of information in the Bible that God has given us to bless us. Mm. When you look at the lives of men in the Bible and what they had to go through, mm. because, you know, when, when, you, when you feel like God's given you a vision, mm. the natural thing you want is for the doors to just fling yeah. open before you because yeah. this is God's work. God yeah. has asked me to do it, so he's going to make the provision, he's going to give me yeah. the connections, he's going to make it all happen. Yeah. And it doesn't always happen as quickly or as easily as we expect or we want. Talk to me, because I mean, my husband, my husband in, in addition to pastoring, God gave him a vision for the Global Day of Prayer for London. And I can tell you stories. I'm oh, telling you. I'm sure you can. You can't. You, and I see him, you know, I see him phoning. I see him. And I'm thinking, thank God he, he didn't give me that idea. Because mm. I would have said to God, God, <laughs> hey, you know what? I have tried. Uh, I have labored. Mm. I have invested my own money. I have done everything I know to do. At this junction, can I just pack it? Yes. And just, but he's, he's so, and that's the thing about a vision. I know that we will go to Wembley. I know we will pray. And just like you're saying, for every door that shuts, one opens. For every door that opens, maybe one takes, you know, one shuts. But, and, and like he was saying on Sunday when he was preaching, eternity. You standing before God and say, Mary, I gave you this idea. What did, what you, did do? you do? <laughs> you know, no you, excuse. There's is no good ex- enough. No. No, no, no excuse is good enough. And the thing is, God always gives you um, signs. Yeah. He, he never really leaves you alone, no matter he how difficult. He always shows you, listen, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, the other day, I was really feeling low. Uh, I think it was Sunday. I was really, really feeling low. And I was listening to the song, um, Yolanda Adams, mm. um, Never Give Up. I think that's what it's called, Never Give Up. Mm. And she was saying, as when there's something in you that keeps inspiring you to try, mm. then don't give up. Mm. When you, you know, when there's, there's, no matter how difficult it is, there's still something in you that's just saying, keep going. Keep, that is not the time to give up. Mm. That it's, it's difficult. Oh, man, it's difficult. I mean, there might be people listening to this program and they're saying, well, you've had your trials, but you have no idea what mm. I've gone through. 
It's the same I, I, in different ways. No matter how honestly. bad it is. It's, I always say it's the same in different ways. Yes. For us, it may be ministry. You know, for some people, it's their children. For some, it's their marriage. For some, it's their education. For some, it's a health challenge. You know, different things. Mm. And we are in this life. Yeah. And the Bible says, be of good I have overcome the world. You will challenge that. You will question. One of my best scriptures is um, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In all things, give thanks. I wrestle with that scripture. What do you mean mm. I should give thanks in all things? Yeah. When it does short, I should thank mm. you. But then you still look back and count your many blessings, and you name them. And God never leaves something without a witness. You will That's exactly see, which what I'm is saying. Yeah. Yeah. You will still see, mm, he did this for me. Yeah. He came through. Yes. You know, things, so it's almost like we have to keep on pushing and keep, you know, keep going. And, I mean, one of the things you said that really um, struck me is the fact that other people had the same idea, but they did nothing with it. You know, as you were going, you kept meeting, but you decided yeah. you were going to do something. But even that is fraught with challenges yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely. But today we can stand and say we're the number one. We're the first ones that did it. Others might come after us, but we can say we, we, we took that step of faith first. And, when, and none of these you is when you take that step, then others begin. Which to, is good. Uh, which is fun. That <laughs> which means is you good. have a pioneering Absolutely. grace. Absolutely. It's good, but you know, you you can say, well, we 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 broke through, we mm. broke through, and you know, the thing is, sometimes, you know, it's one thing to read the word of God; it's yeah. another thing for it to come alive in your yeah. in your life. Yeah. So when the word of God says trials come to make us strong, mm. it's easy to read that scripture and think, oh, it's true, trials come to make us strong. But how is it going to be real in your life if mm. you never go through a trial mm. and you never actually find out that trials really do come to but make I don't us like strong? Trials, Nobody though. does. <laughs> Nobody I does. I don't like trials. Nobody does. <gasps> but, but the thing is, you know, when you've gone through one, you know for sure that that word is true. I know. That says trials come to I make know. us strong. I know. Because you know yeah. you've gone stronger. And you, and you, it matures you. You see things differently. Um, you know, I'm at a place where I just, you know, I just go with God's flow. You don't have hustle. Mm. You know that well. I will pr try my best. I believe in hard work. Oh, definitely. I believe in prayer. Somebody says it this way. Walk like you've never prayed and, and pray, pray like, like you've, you've never, never worked. worked. Yeah. So it's a balance of both. Mm. Just like marriage is 100% Jonathan and I and it's 100% God. So it's, it's a two-way mm. um, partnership, mm. three-way partnership deal. And I've got a question here. It says, um, God bless you. Do you have any materials or any that you know of that teaches how bad how bad worldly music is place. If you do, may I have the details? I really need it for teens. Uh, I suppose they can send you an email or they can yes. call your office. Yes, they can send an email, um, inquiries at justoutofthisworld.co.uk. Okay. Inquiries. Can, um, um, yeah, inquiries yeah. at justoutofthisworld.co.uk okay. and we can respond to that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So now tell us about um, Just Out of the... So where are you at? So you had this idea to start yes. and then... <laughs> yes, and we had our first season, like I say, in 2009. Last year, um, the winner of last year's competition actually recently released her single under the Integrity Media How label. How did you get Integrity Media? I know, that is one of the things when I say God never leaves you without a witness. Amen. That was just God. Ah. That was just God. I mean, the way we got connected to the director of Integrity. I never met him before he said yes. Oh. I never had a face-to-face -face meeting. Mm. It was just, did I even speak to him? No, it was just email. Really? Just email communication. Yeah. And the answer was yes, and I was like... Yes. Oh, fantastic. And the single came out. It was produced by Noah Robinson. It's a beautiful song, oh. beautiful song um, called Incredible. Okay. It talks about the incredible love of God. Yeah. Um, it's available on iTunes okay. and it's available from Chi Chi's website, which is chichikuku.com. Okay. So people can Hopefully download we'll get, it. Hopefully we'll get her to come one of these yes. days to talk about, yes. you know, Yes, uh, so th that, that was a great achievement for us mm. from last year. This year, again, we, we started the competition. The first season, we only had auditions in London. Okay. Uh, 2010, we went to Birmingham. Okay. And this year, we went to Manchester. Oh, 
Oh, so you're doing three locations, London, yes. Birmingham, and Manchester. Oh, yes. Wow, yeah. We hope, we, hope, we hope to take it further Amen. as well Amen. because we want it to be a real national event. National mm. event yes. Uh, so we've had the initial stages of the auditions. We have our regional finalists. So we have the quarterfinals coming up now, and that's this Saturday, actually. Oh, okay. This Saturday. Um, at Liberty Church in North London. I suppose all the details are on the screen. All the details on the are website. on the website, okay. justoutofthisworld.co.uk, so okay. people can get all the details there. And this year, it's just been really, really amazing because the whole idea for Just Out of This World is not to put people in a box. Mm. Uh, it's open to Christians with, you know, that that operate in all genres of music. So we have rappers, we have we have a, a lady actually she's fifty something, she's the oldest in the competition. Oh. And she oh she's lovely. That's she good. yes um, she does her little thing. She's more like a Shirley Caesar kind of mm, singer. Yeah. yeah. So we have different varieties mm. which is really, really lovely. Mm. So they're all gonna come down on Saturday for the quarterfinals and then we'll pick out of those the finalists who will go on to the semi finals, which is on the twenty seventh of August and then the finals on the 10th of September. Wow, God, yeah. God, God is with you yes. and I pray that you, know, you never know there may be people watching who want to get involved or yes. would like to know more mm. or you know sponsor or support what you're doing. Oh, and sponsors, because... yes, we want sponsors, <laughs> definitely. definitely. Let, let's face it, it takes money to put the shows on TV. Mm. Um, you know, so anybody wants a sponsor, please give me a call. <laughs> Oh, wow. This yeah. is so exciting. And I really do pray that it's an alternative. It's an entertaining event, you know, at the same time, yes. lifting up the name of Jesus yes. and showcasing the different yes. skills that are in the yes. body. Yeah. We really wanted to just do something big for God. We wanted to make noise for mm. God. Uh, there was a time years ago when Christian music was popular in this country. Mm. You know, it was on mainstream TV. but really? not any Yes. Yes, programs like People Get Ready. Okay, I you remember know. watching that. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, but, but these days it's kind of quiet. Mm. But gospel music is powerful. I mean, I've shared this vision with non-believers, and they love gospel music. They've told me, how, yes. Really? So we can't put Christian music in a box. We mm. can't say it's only for churchgoers. It's not. Mm. Because people so how love can we get? I, 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 so how do we... How, I wonder how the church really can i think we will we, we need money the gospel industry oh, in the yes. uk the, needs money to yes. really pump push and out. push push, it, push out. it out as yes. an alternative yes. but i believe the churches have a big role to play because for now they they have the people they mm. have that platform so if churches for example in the uk get behind a project like this just by encouraging their members to get involved mm. even just if it's just to watch you on tv and to vote for example mm. even if they can't get to the physical venues mm. then that shows already a sense of unity we're all in this yeah, everybody together. has a voice yeah. you are saying because we don't want the winner to come from the church with the largest congregation mm. okay i see what you mean yeah so if, if all the churches really put their, you know, their voice behind this and say, this is a show for the church in the UK, mm. watch it, you vote for your favorite contestant. So the winner actually truly reflects the nation's choice, mm. you know, yeah. then it will be a a larger noise that we're making mm, as a people. Yeah, and Be I know that's where you're going. I Amen. know it's a, you're already on that track, and I, I suppose as you're talking, I'm thinking one of the key things that would help would be prayer. Definitely. You know, because you can't oh, do this without praying oh, when yeah. you're battling the prince of the power of the air. And that's the thing. We all know where Satan came from. Yeah. We all know he was the director of music, so he will do anything to keep Christian music under mm. and instead promote music that promotes violence and mm. prom promiscuity and all that business. Yeah. So as a church, we really need to wake up. Mm. We really need to wake up yeah. and understand that music is a powerful tool yeah. that we can use to propagate the gospel. You can even for evangelism purposes, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, there's, there's so much. It's, it's fantastic. I like this. And I like the fact that, you know, you're able to... So what happens when you're out on the road? What happens to the solicitors firm? Do, do you have other people working there? Well, yes, I have, I have other people that can hold the front for me when I'm away. But I try not to do things too much during the week. Okay. Um, you know, most, most of the shows take place over the weekend, obviously. But where I have to attend an interview, like today, for example, then, yes, I have... Uh, capable hands in the firm that hold that up for for me 
Okay. So that, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> and are, are your kids involved in just out of this Oh, world? very much involved. They come up with ideas. They tell me what they like. They, and kids are, if you need a sounding board, they mm. are perfect. Mm. Because one, they'll be honest. Yeah. Two, they're current. They yeah. know what's going on. So when we do a design, for example, or something, or a banner or on the website, they'll say to you, oh, I think it it's not trendy enough or yeah. so so they they're very much involved my my older son he goes more with me to these shows and okay. because he loves music as well as very well. much so yeah. yeah they they love it they love it so <laughs> if there are any of uh, any of our viewers watching you know what what would you like to say to them <laughs> um what generally yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah well um it's just to say follow your dream mm. we are all dreamers god god, god made us dreamers Mm. Um, as a child, I used to dream a lot. And I don't mean going to sleep and dreaming. I used to daydream a lot. That's my daughter. <laughs> I encourage people who daydream. I love Dreaming. them. Yes, because God gave us a mind and he uses our imagination to, to, to communicate to us. I used to have a lot of daydreams, just sit down and just dream. And I believe that is God just pouring down, downloading ideas into mm. I have loads of ideas, loads of ideas, loads of things we could be doing, you mm. know. So I just want to encourage anybody out there, if you have a dream, get up and make it a reality. Mm. Take the step, take that first step to do what you need to do mm. and see God begin to shape and you might not even see the end you might not be able to actually define it clearly but as you begin to take steps the Bible says his word is a light onto my path and a lamp onto my feet sometimes the lamp is right there mm. sometimes the light shines just that far mm. and it looks like it's dark to the end to the, to, to the end of the tunnel mm. but as you keep walking God will make things clearer for you. Mm. It's just a question of taking that step. Don't mm. think about it like this. You might say, well, what if I try and it doesn't work? What if you try and it works? Mm. What if you try and it works? You, we must never be accused of not trying. Mm. We must never be accused of not trying. Mm. You know, don't, don't leave it to, well, what if? What could have been? It's, it's more of a battle of the mind yes. you know, that we really have to tackle. Mm. Do, do you actively mentor... Um, people in music yes oh you do yes do you I run do. a session do you run do you do run classes do you uh, no I do it on a one-to-one -one basis for for now okay um, I mean depending on demand we might decide to run classes in future but we do it on a one-to-one -one basis that well that was the other reason we decided to do just out of this world because we know that it's easy to watch shows on TV like we we're just talking about mm. reality programs and you think I win a competition and overnight I'll become a pop star. But mm. that's not what happens. Mm. If you want to actually stay and have longevity, you need somebody to actually mentor you. You need somebody to help you, mm. keep you grounded. You know, so this is not just all about the music. It's about raising people who are not just talented, but they have character, they have the anointing, they have what will sustain them in this journey mm. so they don't get sidetracked, you know. So that's what we do. We mentor the, the, the contestants through the competition and the winner as well okay. to take them forward. Because, for instance, I one of the things we've found out here, because I have friends who have gifted and talented kids, mm. both musically and acting-wise, but you find that, that the top schools are very secular mm. and they push every agenda you can think of. Yes. Um, in other states, you know, they have alternatives. In, state, in, in the United States, they have alternatives. But here, you know, so it's either you keep your light under the bushel. Or uh, you join. Or you join. Yes. So there is a need. Is For a it? Christian performing art school. There is. There is. That's my dream. Ah. It will materialize <laughs> one day. We need because it. Because I, I really am very, very passionate about the performing arts. Yeah. Really, really. Just sit down and just watch any program on TV and just see the impact that that program has on yeah. you. And like you say, I have kids who want to do acting. I have kids who want to dance. My, my daughter young, is a natural actress. My youngest son loves to dance. He loves, he, he's not really into hip hop like yeah. a lot of boys are. He's, he, he's into more modern dance. Yeah. And he's just started his dance classes. And you sometimes I go in just to see what they're doing. Yeah, and the other day they were playing. In fact, the first day he came back, he said to me, I loved it, I enjoyed it. But they made us dance to Lady Gaga's Judas. Yeah. And that was him knowing, uh, my mom will really like this. It's not yeah. really. But what do you do? Yeah. 
So we need one. So if there's anybody watching who has a desire for perfin, performing arts, maybe they should contact you. We need <laughs> uh, one. We do. We I know do. the location might be, but we need a performing arts school. We need a music academy. Top notch. Top notch. Uh, honestly. And I feel with prayer, you know, and... Um, a lot of those things, you know, it would it would materialize. Amen. Pastor Mary, thank you so much for it's coming. Been my I've enjoyed it. Speaking. I've enjoyed my time with you. Thank, <laughs> thank you for having you. me. Thank you. You know, as a mother of three healthy wise men, as a wife, as a pastor, as an entrepreneur, because you run your own law practice, and you also run this gigantic project that yeah. has many heads to it. <laughs> <laughs> and the first one is um, the Just Out of This World event. Mm. I, I'm telling you, you are a real, real model. Thank you. you. Know, and I want to say a big thank you thank for you. coming. And uh, I'm sure we'll keep on you know, seeing what's going on. You'll yes. be feeding us in on, yes. on what's happening. You know? <laughs> wow. Any last words for a few seconds? Last um, for a few seconds. I think if people learn to keep God at the center of their lives, everything else will fall into place. Okay. That's what I do. So keep God at the center of your life. Till we meet again, thank you very much for watching.